Okay, and finally we're live. I think this is episode 13 of Get It for the year 2020. And uh, welcome to my get fr good friend and and uh, uh, guest today, um, Nirmalan. Um, so we've just had a very interesting conversation about uh, the practice in Tamil communities in terms of names and surnames. So Nirmanan's name is surname, and the Maharaja or Magaraja is his father's name. Um, so it's not really his surname. So, yeah, well, you learn something every day. Um, welcome so much, my friend. I'm so glad to have you here. You've invited me to a few of your 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 talks already, and uh, it's it's high time that I do the same. And I'm looking forward to our conversation. Um, so, before we start, tell us a little bit about who's Nirmala. You know, what do you do? Why do you do it? What makes you tick? What annoys you? Yeah. Um, so that our guest has got a little bit of a better understanding of of who I'm talking to. Uh, hi, everybody there. Um, I'm Nirma, as introduced. Uh, I'm into a consulting practice. We basically focus on uh, global best practice frameworks, uh, processors, practices. Uh, that's our main uh, focus area, uh, which uh, uh, then again comes down to process practice, governance, and strategies. So that's one of the main uh, focus area that we do. And also I do a lot of visiting lectures around for many universities around the world. Uh, also serve within many boards. Uh, uh, simply that's it is. Okay. So, so what makes you get up in the morning? Mm -hmm. Automatically, if something tickles me. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what 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 is the tickling? Is it the intellectual challenge? Is it a, a uh, some, problem? Something or? something bothers in the morning, like you know, something get reminded. Okay. Yeah, because I don't take you as somebody who can sit still. Um, I, I I I cannot imagine Nirmalan doing. Uh, you know, seated meditation. I don't know if you do, but uh, that's not my image of you. <laughs> Definitely, no. Uh, I sleep late, you know, get up very early. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the, the two of us met on a podcast um, with APMG, I think, and then we clicked and sort of became friends over the time. Yeah, um, and that was awesome. And I also know that there's some, some things that's, that you find really annoying about what people are doing lately yeah so the 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 the, the title of the conversation is trust uh, and customer experience in a digital age now lots of people are talking about the positive things about you know customer experience and and how we can better engage with customers and and, and how technology can help that but the, that's a double-sided coin isn't it yeah definitely yes uh, so, technology plays a role, yes, but uh, it's about feeling of the heart. Yeah, and 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 sometimes some of these things I think that that organisations is doing um, is not necessarily helping us to have better customer relationships, for that matter, or um, um, or facilitates a. a a, a, a position of trust and wonder of the supplier. So how can the digital, or let, let's not blame digital, it's people, yeah? How can people misuse uh, technology in the digital age and then it results into a worse customer experience? Oh, yeah. Uh, if you really see these contacts, you're talking about technology being misused. Uh, most of the organization nowadays uh, have service desk. Mm -hmm. Service desk being 
a more stereotype of response to customers. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the complaints doesn't go through properly. I'm not referring to every single organization. Mostly mm -hmm. it doesn't go through. And it doesn't come back with a good response in the right time. Yeah. So the, 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 the suffocation goes back to customer. Yeah. Now, yeah and it's a great frust frustration if you're trying to get something solved, but you don't get answers. Exactly. So the, that uh, the moment of uh, uh, what customer feel at that moment and the trouble that particular customer is in is not really realized. Mm. One problem. Second yeah. problem, uh, uh, service test being more stereotype uh, that doesn't resolve every single problem. Mm. So what is the other mechanism? Some organizations will have uh, a complaint management system. But then again, what is the SLA? Have you given an SLA on that? Everything yeah. goes through service test to resolve in the normal SLA will not address your urgency. Mm. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that frustrates me certainly is that more and more people are using technologies <laughs> to create barriers. That's at least how it feels to me. Yeah. Um, I, I get hyper annoyed if I actually, if I realize I've got a problem, I'm busy speaking to a bot, for instance. Um, so that's when I type in, I want to speak to a real person. But that doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. happen. That's the problem, yeah. That doesn't happen because mostly the senior management hide behind the service desk. Service desk yeah. become a shield for them. So yeah. they don't, unless otherwise you have aggressively reached them, uh, you have bugged them so much. You know, yeah. that uh, customer relationship manager is not going to come out and deal with you. Yeah. Now, and so, that's not a great reward for a, for a customer that just invested in buying your product or service. Um, definitely. That's actually quite lousy. Um, okay. So we, we see the, the service desk as a sort of um, a mechanism, and I like your words, to hide behind, because that's how it feels to me quite often. Yeah? <laughs> um, and then things like, you know, um, self-response and FAQs and yeah, bots and all of these things. But we tend to forget, I don't know, it seems like many organizations forget that they deal with people. Um, you know, people want to talk to people or interact with people at least. Oh, um, uh, okay, I've lost you there for a moment. Hello. I hope it's not me. Hello? Yeah, only I'm there. Uh, I just disappeared for a second just before we, we actually started, Nirmal, and I lamented about the, the fact that um, we, we both live in countries where the, the power doesn't seem to stay on. <laughs> so um, it, it seems like something switched off and took over. So sorry for that momentary lapse of, uh, of connection. Um, and it's happening again. Hello, are you there? I am online. Oh my gosh. Um, if anybody can hear me, don't you want to respond in whatever platform it is that you, you're watching? Hopefully it will come through to my screen. Okay, Nimbaland's back. I don't know who it is, you or me. Um, so I, 
I, I, I missed your last comment. Um, would you just for my benefit make that again? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. I, I, either yeah. I'm back or you back. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just forgot like what I was talking. Um, yeah, so we, we we were talking about yeah the, the the fact that it seems like the the management of organisations has forgotten that they deal with people. Um, um, and and then you commented on that, uh, I, I, and I didn't See, get your response. Sorry. There are multiple factors uh, uh, have a role to play on this. Mm -hmm. uh, when when it comes to business, mostly like you know they are more focused towards revenue generation. Uh, like last time in your conversation, uh, one week before, what you had is working with the heart. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. If you're yeah. working with the heart, obviously you are going to work with conscience. Yes. So uh, that is not uh, happening. And if you are going to, like, you know, sit, uh, uh, step, uh, take the shoes of customer mm. and think how the service that you are providing, uh, definitely a lot of things can change. But unfortunately, the, the, the drive that you have, maybe the KPIs that you have, the pressure that you have doesn't allow so. Yeah. But that need to change. Yes, I agree. Um, but it, it's sort of the concept of thinking about servant leadership when it gets to your customer also, yes? Yep. Definitely. Okay, you were saying but? But what I was trying to tell is, now having said this, if organizations provide the right service with the right mindset, definitely customers are going to have a better experience, which is gradually going to create trust. Mm. But unfortunately, the race that they go through, uh, maybe doesn't allow them to do so. Maybe the, the, the right people are not sitting at the right place to do it. Maybe the senior management is not aware. But that's not an excuse. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we, we've sort of identified that you can hide between uh, behind technology. Um, that mindset is important. And I think mindset penetrates throughout the organization from the top, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe... Maybe it's because management is not aware. Um, yeah, I, I find that hard to believe um, because that's that's the job of management, isn't it? The leadership of the organization to know what the hell is busy happening in the organization. So if if those are the things that typically goes wrong, um, how do we... Okay, let me make this statement first. Yeah, yeah, the, the title is Trust and Customer Experience. But people will not trust us if we don't care. But do you have I, an option? Sometimes you don't have an option. I, I, I don't know. Can, can, can you hide behind the fact that you don't have an option? Um, of course, yes. Able to make say, plan? Say, yeah, but definitely, yes. If you don't have a switching option, what else would you do? Like, you know, say, if I go to a bank, uh, bank provide bad service, but I don't have a choice because even if I leave this bank, if I go to some other bank, I'm going to get the same treatment. So it yeah. also bugs down to the customers. If they have not demanded, they're not going to get that service. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, it, it seems like customers are much less activist than they, what they were a few years ago. Um, I, I, I just don't understand why people accept bad service. Um, I certainly don't. But then... Yeah, people say I'm abrasive and difficult, you yeah. uh, It depends on the culture, yeah. which country that you are living in, uh, the laws and regulations surrounding that, the switching options available. Uh, yeah. A lot of factors will govern that. Okay, but let, let's change the, 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 the conversation from 
the customer looking inwards rather as the leadership looking outwards. So first of all, how do we know that our customers have got a crappy experience? And secondly, what are things that we can do to improve that? And it doesn't need to be complicated stuff or you know, the expensive stuff, because I, I believe where there's a will, there's a way, yes? Yeah, definitely, yes. Uh, there are multiple mechanisms that you could deploy. Uh, one, you can simply start off with a complaint management system. Okay. And uh, maybe you can um, govern that uh, uh, directly by the senior management. And, you know, do frequent audits on that to see how things are happening. A problem which is getting repeated multiple times could have been uh, reached directly uh, to the uh, customer. And uh, the senior management can investigate further, like, you know, why it is not getting resolved. Mm. Simple as such. But then again, see, first of all, the organization need to accept that it's a mistake for them mm. to correct. If they cover it up, if they defend, then yeah. what's going to happen? Every single step of yours is going to be surrounding that. We are not to be blamed. Yeah. So who is to be blamed? You try and put it back to the customer. Wasn't me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it, this happens, right? So like, you know, the, mm. they take every single step to justify customer is that mistake or it's purely because of your mistake, this has happened. Mm. Now, then the moment that you start seeing where the mistake has happened and if you rectify on the spot, accept, apologize, what's the problem? Mm. We are too big, we can't apologize. Is there a problem like that? Yeah, it's, yeah, no, that's ego, that's, right? That's, that's, that's where the customer experience starts. Mm. See, what you need to understand, the experience is feeling of heart. Mm. It's about Absolutely. satisfaction. Yeah. It's about satisfaction. And, and, and nobody wants to feel like whoever they're dealing with doesn't care. See, your, your excuses basically doesn't make any sense to me because what I have paid for or mm. why, why I have come to you and why I am paying you is to get the service not to listen to your excuses. Yeah. Right? Keep your excuses with you. Give us what okay. you want. So you, you said for a, a tip would be a customer complaint system. Yeah. Now, something interesting just to remark is um, in a past life, uh, one of our customers actually did exactly that. And then nothing really happened because the people who were monitoring it was too junior in the organization. And then the CEO said, okay, there's a new KPI for all senior people in the organization. So VP level up, yeah? You have to contact a cust at least one customer a day from that system. Um, and that had a huge impact on uh, the profitability of the organization um, because people felt that the organization cared. There was somebody higher up in the organization that actually took my complaint to heart. And because you care about me, I'm willing to invest more in you. So that's a that's that's really an amazing story. And I'm glad that you mentioned it because I've forgotten about it. It's like 12 years ago that this happened um, already. And it again depends on what kind of customers you have. Like there are multiple segments of customers. There are customers yeah. who are going to be looking for a generalized service. Mm. There are customers who look for that, like, you know, ultimate experience. So the expectation differs. So now the first question comes, do you really know your customer? If you yeah. want to satisfy the experience, you need to know the customer well. Who am I talking to? Mm. Right? Whom are you yeah. serving? Some customers, it's going to be very serious type of requirements. Mm. So they are not going to make any big change. The people who are really going to stress upon you, people who have different expectations, mm. that's where the problem starts. Yeah. Now, if you have not set that pitching correctly, 
like you know it's about expectation setting like you know yeah. we have different class of customers and these are the customers this is what we are going to serve them and this mm. customer set we are going to serve differently now this may not be necessarily a classification based on the revenue that they are generating and then the business model is wrong yeah so now the the, the, the main issue is if they go by the revenue that is generating sometimes you might miss the right people mm. yeah no, there are absolutely. people who are going to you are going to you are going to watch for people who are going to come back to you maybe with mm. feedbacks maybe with complaints and solutions yeah yeah so what we suggest nowadays like you know engage those identify those customers and engage them as part of your journey because they can do much more than your internal people sometimes yeah so here's an interesting observation uh, not observation it's something that i've actually said quite a number of times in especially when when i talk to service desk people uh, it's really important to to set expectations also not only to understand expectations but to make sure that that customers understand what they can expect because if I don't tell you what you can expect at first you're going to expect more than what I'm willing to offer and then you're going to be disappointed and eventually you're going to expect nothing from me well we don't want to be there because then we've basically lost you as a customer do you agree with that statement uh i i i do agree of uh, some part of it uh, but i think what i feel is this expectation should have been uh, set at the time that you are starting the engagement with the customer yes yeah not when it comes to service test so when you are selling the product okay. itself you should have absolutely set okay these are mm -hmm. the expectations this is what we will give you and this is what you will get yes i agree with you uh, the reality is it quite often doesn't happen and then we have to do it after the fact yeah uh, <laughs> yeah <clears throat> Yeah, the, the reason why I'm saying that is quite often, yeah, IT enter into an SLA with the business and then the SLA says, you know, um, you can call the service desk from eight to five and yeah, if it's not a high priority thing, you can expect it to be fixed in eight hours. And, but that message is never given over to the general user base. The guy who signed the SLA said from the business, so yeah, we've signed an SLA with IT, so any IT problem, phone the service desk so the expectation is a complete mismatch so it's really important to communicate that yeah what you can expect um and as you said before it's really important for us to first understand before we do that who we're dealing with and what the expectation is um, so that depends on the business model again uh depends whether you are going to do a b2b business or whether you are going to do b2c normally b2b you will have more uh, supportive uh, mm. or more support service because it's a corporate account but yeah. where the care doesn't go to that extent is when it comes to b2c yeah but you know even even though you've got more input if you engage with the, with a business the b2b model i think organizations take far too little time it's at least the leadership of organizations to understand who their customers are. Um, and, and quite often I see people saying, saying to, to yeah, the rest of the organization who we need to make things happen. Okay. So what do our customers want? And they guess, yeah, isn't that a great idea to ask the customer, even if it is just a small sample of them? Yeah. What is it that you really want? doesn't have to cost a uh, ton of money. Uh, definitely. Uh, uh, see, uh, when it comes to B2C, like we are talking about a business engagement there. Mm. So we okay. are their business needs. Good man alive. We are struggling tonight. Let me see what I can do. Pause that. I've lost you again, Nirmala. 
Um, what else can I switch off? Are you so back? We are trying, I've lost yeah. you again. <laughs> so we are trying to, uh, uh, like you know, address the business needs. Yeah. Now here is where the thing is. Like you need to understand the customers fully if you want to serve them properly. Yeah. You need I to agree. understand their business. You need to understand their business trends. Like you know, what is your service? Whether that service will meet the expectations of the customer. Is there anything that you could should do in order to make that the right match for them? Are they utilizing it in the proper form? If not, you should help them to utilize it. That's where the win-win come. That is where yeah. the relationship get built. That is where the trust component get built. Okay. This is one side of it. Then again, having that relationship, uh, you should be able to understand their uh, upcoming needs, trends, business patterns. You should be able to be ready in the future to cater for those requirements, to change according to their requirements. Now that actually builds up a huge trust and confidence. If you yeah. have done a proper service, automatically you continue to have more business. So we are both party wins. Okay. So that's where we build that relationship. Okay. Sorry, I just quickly wanted to paste the comment here. Um, somebody said that the, the stream stopped in LinkedIn. There's absolutely nothing that I can do about it. Um, so what I suggest, I've just posted the link on, on, on um, YouTube. If I can please ask you to continue watching on YouTube. Um, the, the streaming platform, once we're busy streaming, I, is nothing I can do about it. Sorry for the inconvenience, uh, but there is an alternative. Quickly go to the link uh, that I've posted. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that I do a quick post in LinkedIn also. Nirmalan, continue. Sorry for rudely interrupting. But since we are talking about customer experience and uh, making sure that it is a good experience, <laughs> Uh, I just want to quickly help this this viewer uh, to to give them an alternative. Okay, uh, where is it? Paste, and then I can post, and that will do it. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Okay, so how do we understand what customers wants and needs? Because they're not quite the same thing, or are, are they? Uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, every customer is not going to be the same. But at the end of the day, like, there are multiple approaches that you are going to take. One is you are going to offer a service which is for everybody. There is no change. There may be customers which you want to give a very specialized service. You are going to customize your services. Okay. So this expectation need to be set very correctly at the beginning, okay. at the time that you are selling. Now, if you have committed for a customized service, you are supposed to provide what they want. So you need to understand their needs and expectation, what they have, mm -hmm. what they want, fill it, and how your service is going to actually bring that value addition to that organization. Sometimes uh, your customer may not be able to use that particular service uh, in the right way. That is where you are going to step in and help them to utilize that service mm -hmm. in a more beneficial way that uh, can bring more value addition to that organization. Okay, but but th that now assumes that you you understood the, the requirement and it, it fits within your, your business model. Because I think what sometimes happen is that organizations start offering a service without knowing what the expectation is. Um, and then later they, they realize that they actually can't afford to offer the level of service that <laughs> well, that's where the expect. problem
Okay, I've lost Nirmalan again. Nirmalan, if 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 you need to reconnect again. Um, in the meantime, there's a Facebook user that says, "What business? Uh, what praise, uh, precious business?" Uh, face when transitioning for, from a physical to a okay Nirmalan has joined again so okay cool um I don't know how far you talked before we lost you again no 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 I stopped uh, immediately <laughs> did you okay so what, I, you know, what I was trying to say is that problem starts when the person who markets or sell the product or service and when there is a mismatch between the service provisioning guys Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's something that organization need to take care yeah? because they have, they might go and commit something which uh, a, a service provisioning guys will not be able to deliver. Yeah. Then you are going to be in trouble. Yeah. And, and so the only choice is, 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 is to, to, to negotiate with the customer for a lesser experience or to charge more. Now that before pro actually provisioning and validating that offering, you need to uh, ensure, like you know, whether that particular service can be mm -hmm. actually offered as per expectation. Okay. So before that, uh, you should not get into that agreement uh, itself. Okay. So there's a Facebook user, the user that says, "What um, what pressures do business face as they transition from a physical?" experience to a digital experience and i suppose customer experience thing so how, how how is high touch different than digital and should it be different um when you look at digital it gives you an availability all the time mm. so now this availability for whom a common set of users a stereotype of answers that you're looking for yeah. yes it's going to happen mm. but if you are going one step further you may use augmented reality in certain cases but all these basically only address your vision and hearing yeah. the rest of the five sensors are still in question mark mm. right so yeah. now it again depends on what kind of a service. Now, if it is purely digital, then I'm not going to see you. The first problem that comes when I can't trust you face to face, how do I trust your applications? Yeah. Will my data be secure? What are you going to do with my information? Yeah. Though that we have all the guidelines, GDPR, security procedures and all, there are still a lot of compromisations. Yeah. And I think the, the, the lesson that we need to learn from that is that um, just because there's tools available that seems to provide answers, it doesn't mean that they do provide the answer. And we should always attempt to have a, a, a I wouldn't say additional, but an alternative way, an alternative means for customers to communicate with us. Yeah, I there, there's some products we um, uh, communities of users actually provides that. Yeah, um, and it's maybe not for me ideal that that a a a non company person actually helps me with my problem. But if you think about it, the important thing is that I want to be helped. To solve my problem, um, and those communities um, can actually be very valuable. So I quite often take part in 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 those communities and and use it. Um, just bear in mind if you do use it, there's sort of a, a moral obligation for you to give back. Yeah, so to pay it forward. Um, we seem to have lost Nermalan again, so I'm I'm hoping he will join quickly. Um, in the meantime, there was a there was a question here. Um, are there methods to measure digital customer experience? Um, 
and digital maturity of a business. Now, they're, they're completely different things, though. So the first thing that I want to say, say to our listeners about customer experience is the only way to measure that is to speak to customers, okay? So if you're in the digital realm, you can obviously use tools like surveys or so forth to do that. But the best thing still is to randomly just reach out to people who's bought your product. It's as simple as sending a mail and saying, we're so chuffed that you actually invested your hard and cash with our organization. And we hope that you love our product. But if you don't, please tell us about it. What can we do to make your experience better? You're going to learn tons more by doing those simple actions. A few emails in a week that you send to customers and just reaching out to people um, who's actually taken the time and the effort to invest in your, your company. Because that's what customers do. They actually invest in your company. Now, uh, digital maturity mm, of a business, that's an interesting question. Now, the, the reason why I'm saying it's an interesting question is that um, this whole idea of maturity models um, is actually a concept that better fits um, the industrial age management model. Um, it assumes that everything is process-driven and therefore we can... Uh, measure whether our process is working well or not. And it also makes the assumption that if all our processes are working well, then everything must be okay. Now, I think most of us by now know that's not true. The problem that we face in a digital age is that much of that management theory um, that was developed in the industrial age, um, up until yeah, late 90s, actually is questionable when you apply it today. Um, and, and maturity is actually one of those metrics that I think you must be very careful of only trusting in a maturity assessment. Okay. Um, I don't think that you can actually build a digital maturity assessment because it's changing so fast. Yeah, so a maturity assessment needs stable process. It needs best practice. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so whether you look at the international standards or you, yeah, uh, what's it? I thought thirty-two thousand now. It used to be fifteen five hundred four, or you look at CMMI. All of those models assume that there is a well-defined process to get things done. The reality is, in the digital age, um, rigid process approaches tends to be less um, workable, less usable, um, less effective. Um, so still waiting for Nirmalan to rejoin us. So I'm just filling up time at the moment. Uh, there he pops up again. Wonderful. It seems like, hey, we're playing seesaw today. <laughs> yes. Uh, this time it has okay. my connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, um, there was a question uh, from a Facebook Sorry. user that says, um, are there measure, uh, ways to measure customer experience and digital maturity? So um, let's talk a little bit about customer experience in a digital context, um, because I'm, I think this is what the conversation is more about today. Uh, how would you measure customer experience or digital customer experience? Uh, yeah, as I told you, like, you know, the digital, uh, 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 tech, uh, digital applications or digital mechanisms are going to give you uh, some kind of experience uh, in, a, in a different form. Say it depends on the availability expectation. Mm -hmm. But the touch and feel that you get, you are not going to get it in the form that people are addressing it. Mm. So now if you are looking at a, an application, you have everything working perfectly. You know, you are very satisfied with the application. The moment that you have a problem that the application can't deal with, 
where you have to reach out to people. That's mm. where that application is going to create a huge gap in mm. response. Now, if the application has taken care of all the happy parts and the unhappy part of that customer journey and the touch points, yes, possibly that application can satisfy and give a better experience. Okay. And this again but if, depends in the context. But if you as an organization wants to be proactive now yeah. and you want to reach out to your customers, and all of these customers are digital customers. Now, in the old days, we used to do Sorry, customer I, satisfaction I, I, surveys. Can you hear me now? So in the old days, yeah, we used to do hear. customer satisfaction surveys. What is the alternative of that or the, the thing that replaces that in the digital age? Uh, there are various, again, we have various surveys uh, various spontaneous response uh, that is uh, bound with uh, the service itself or maybe the application itself. Sometimes you are followed with SMS, like, you know, maybe with a quick scoring mechanism. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, like, you know, you get a satisfaction rating uh, within the application. You know, various forms, uh, people try to collect that information. Now, there are two factors. I need to go back to the same customer service division to get things done. The moment that I give a bad score, I may be penalized. It depends on the system that they have established. If it is not independent of the service desk or the, the, the people who are providing application, uh, the service, then you will have a serious effect there. Now, if it is completely digital, if it is pure application based, then you you normally you don't get that uh, thing coming out with uh, whether it's good or bad because it's an application. Yeah. Right. But does this application provides all the possible mechanism that the customer can interact? Say, like you know, I, I'm paying a mobile a bill, and uh, accidentally the mobile bill. Uh, got charged twice. Now, what do I do? Can I go and revert? No, that doesn't allow you to revert. You go complain to the service desk. Now, the service desk like have their own time in getting back to that. And the moment they come back, they will ask you to send an email explaining what has happened. Maybe a screenshot of the double payment. Like, you know, so this basically put the customer into a serious hassle. Uh, the intention of going completely digital is to make life easier anywhere, anytime. Yeah. Now, that becomes a reality if everything works well. What about the path uh, that you have not considered? Mm. So that's okay. where like, you start feeling that the service is not giving the real value. Yeah. But, I mean, if you think about it, quite often these days, I, I know and quite a few of the people that I get services from, the moment I've actually logged a call and it's resolved or whatever, I either get an SMS to reply, you know, how, how do you feel about it? You know, are you happy? Are you not happy? Um, what do you think about the person who helped you? Are you happy or are you not happy? And that can be a mail also. Uh, and if you've got online help, text help, um, you know, Quite often, yeah. You know, once something is resolved, um, yeah, a little window will pop up and say, yeah, yes or no. So, um, net promoter score is something so John, easy to I... use as a tool, um, but it's a feel-good metric, though. Go for it, so, Pamela. Uh, John, can I ask you a question? Uh, see, like if they have asked you a question by mail, mm. are you happy or unhappy? Can you give an answer unhappy, straightforward? Knowing that yeah. very clearly it is not the mistake of that service desk guy. It is a mistake of the management. Yeah. Like sometimes so, yes, very it's very obvious. It's they, they are helpless. Yeah. No, right? I, I so like, completely nobody, nobody agree with you. And you don't want to penalize the person that tried to help you. Um Exactly. So I think that's where... And they are, they, are really, being, they are being so genuine. Yeah. 
it's important that if you use mechanisms like that, that you don't use simple mechanisms like a net promoter score. Yeah, so um, I like a, 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 a little survey that comes back that says, was your problem solved? Uh, are you happy with the resolution? What do you think about your interaction with a service desk person? Because that now allows me to say, no, I'm not happy with the resolution, but the service desk person was great. Okay. Um, now, unfortunately, in some uh, circumstances, um, yeah, I know it's it's the poor service desk guy that's going to take the the brunt of the the blame. Um, and I think that's why it's so important that we actually create other mechanisms uh, for customers to engage with us. You know, like you said, the compliance procedure and whatever. But then again, you know, who, who sits behind it? Who drives it? Um, you know, is it going to be used as a stick or is it going to be used as a mechanism to do things better? Um, no uh, stick also, measurement works. John, like Sorry, I missed you there. No, I just said no stick mechanism works long term, yeah, because you're blaming people. That doesn't solve problems, yeah. Um, exactly. But you wanted to say, and also, uh, yeah. Well, like, uh, also, what I feel is uh, rather than like you know sending a feedback uh, in the form of text, I think you should convert it to more voice, more visual. Mm so that the feelings are attached to it. And uh, I will not be hesitating to sit, uh, give that feedback because I don't need to sit and type. Yeah. But unfortunately, quite often, that's the only way you can interact is to type. Uh, the, 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 uh, I don't think technology has a limitation in providing that. If mm. the people who are like you know, uh, applying that or provisioning that, uh, is really interested, they can bring the voice uh, and visual feedbacks. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the main th yeah. So the main thing, all of this stuff comes back to management, isn't it? Yeah, what's management going to do yeah. with it? How much management is willing to engage in it? Yeah, how much time are they willing to invest in it? Yeah, all of that things is, yeah, is, is things that we need to think about. So it doesn't matter which tools you've got. If people don't care, no tool will make you feel cared for. Exactly. The culture. Yeah. Okay. So, so how do you change the culture then? Where do you start? What do you do? Like, now, uh, you need to, first thing, you need to bring the right people sitting in the right place. Mm-hmm. That's one of the most important part. When wrong people sit in the wrong place, things are going to be in trouble. Then you cultivate a customer-centric mindset, customer-centric culture. Now, this culture can be nurtured. One, you need to give them training and you, your KPIs, your mm -hmm. evaluation mechanism should be centered around that. Yeah, and I agree with you. Accepting the feedback is very important for your improvement. Yeah, you don't accept the feedback, you feel that as organization we should can't make mistakes, we can't accept mistakes. Then there is no correction. Mm. Yeah, and and I think there's a, there's another element that that we also need to consider in this whole thing, and that's this issue of 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 creating a, a sort of a safe space uh, for, for the people who's having to field uh, the fury of customers. Um, I mean, it's not an easy job. Uh, it's, a, it's a very hard job. And if you're now also scared of what your boss is going to do, um, I, I think that that makes it really difficult to care about people yeah yeah so that it should it should actually come from the top yeah no i agree like, so 
Where is your chief to... experience officer? Exactly. So it, yes. it should be set as an example. They should lead that. So when they don't live and they are basically lifting that as a service, uh, yeah, obviously it's going to be a serious issue. Uh, it's not going to get cultivated there. So, so can we agree on the fact that it doesn't matter how well your tooling is, if there's not heart behind it and the real care, um, the experience of the customer won't change. Definitely. Okay. Definitely, yes. But some portions, yes, could be addressed. As I told you, like, you know, it it's, depends on how the interaction is going to be. Now, if you are looking at creating a 24-7 availability, tooling might give you a better opportunity. But again, it can be replaced by people, but you don't have that option, then definitely tools will give you a greater substitute. Yeah, but saying that, even though you may not be able to have a person that can take over from the bot 24-7, it doesn't mean you've never got people. You know, so, so surely there must be a mechanism or you need to implement the mechanism that where the bot can't help you anymore. So if somebody like me types in, I want to speak to a real person, that the bot recognizes that and says, sure, we'll contact you or one of our representatives will contact you about this. For me, that's much better than the bot Definitely. spewing lots of nonsense to me saying, but have you tried this? Says, I don't want to try it anymore. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so that's where the urgency comes in. Like, you know, so as I told you, like, you know, the, 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 there are customers who want standard service. So for yeah. them, yeah, that works. But I'm in an urgency. Mm. So I need this to be done immediately. And you, as a service desk, doesn't have the capability to resolve because you need a higher management to authorize it. Mm. So I need to speak to them. But how do I get there? Yeah, and quite often it's impossible to do that. Yeah. So here's, so a, here's a link. Here's a little lesson that I taught both of my sons. Never take no from somebody who doesn't have the, uh, the authority to say yes. Um, now, sometimes you have to go and search very hard for that person with authority. And if they say no, it's no. Yeah, You have to accept that also. But the poor guy at the service desk, or gal for that matter, um, the only thing that they can do is script it. So... You know, exactly. If you want anything that's out of the ordinary, they're going to say no. And they can't say yes. It doesn't matter how much you fight with them or how hard you try or how upset you get. And I think that's the message that needs to get through to, to management in organizations that if, if, if that cause of action has run its course, we need to provide an additional mechanism so that people can actually escalate the conversation. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yes. So, I, um, as I, I, I quite often say on these talks, um, the f the first one that I did was with David Cannon. I think we spent nearly three hours, and after that, I got some remarks back from people saying, "No, come on, yeah, three hours. Uh, you're not Joe Rogan." <laughs> <laughs> so we we're coming up for the, for the hour we about five minutes before um we're going to end the call so let me ask you this what would you say are five things that management and then specifically senior management in organizations can do to improve customer experience in a digital age
it looks like we've lost Nirmalan again. Or he decided, no, that's a difficult question. I don't want to answer that. <laughs> oh, there you are. Nirmalan, can you hear me? My word. Okay. We've just lost Nirmalan again, so he's 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 not in the stream anymore. So hopefully he'll pop up again and we'll hear his answer about the five things that senior management should or could do um, to improve customer service um, in a digital service provisioning context. Um, maybe let my, me take a stab at it. I think that the first thing that you need to bear in mind is that whatever digital tool you use to communicate with your customer, especially if it's, if it's bot-driven, needs to have an alternative. Um, you need to be able to, to, to take the conversation to the next level. Um, okay, you're back. Okay, let's try. Five things, quickly. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear you. Okay, so I said... Five things that you would tell senior management and organizations to do to improve experience in a digital context. Okay. Um, first thing, if you are having a service desk, please make sure there is an escalation mechanism set for customers 100%. to reach you out. Okay. I completely S agree with you. Yeah. Next one. Second, se second thing. Please put the right people who can serve the customers with the right mindset, with the right culture. Hmm. Okay. And I think there's two things to highlight here. It's not only about technical skill. It's also people about mindset. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Next one. Second thing. Uh, so that's third. Please, no. Yeah. Please set SLAs for customers and complaint handling. Okay, good one. And I would maybe add to that, make sure that everybody understands what the what the expectations are, what the SLA exactly. is. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay. And don't give excuses to the customers. Don't put your problems to the customers. Make sure mm. that you deliver what you have promised. Or Absolutely. ensure you have a mechanism to give rebates or maybe discounts or whatever the way, same way that you charge your penalties. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Okay. So the, there's one of the Facebook users just said to me, please repeat your advice to your sons. Okay. Never one, take one, no. One okay. okay. What's there? One more. Sorry. Yeah. I'm counting wrong. I've, I've got, I've got short fingers <laughs> at the moment. Uh, what, uh, one more is, uh, <clears throat> please do a journey mapping. Okay. And ensure that you have addressed all the touch points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't creating offer... Creating the right experience. Yeah, you can't offer an experience to somebody who, who, who you don't understand. Yeah, so journey mapping is certainly a really good tool and to very, use. Very importantly understand your customers correctly everybody is not the same please okay. deal appropriately I also one, one more one more one more okay when customers give the right feedback if your organization has not identified those issues please mm. engage them and take them as part of your journey which can give you a better results so that's a very interesting thing. Customers quite often are willing to help us solve our problems. All we need to do is ask. Yeah? And I think that's one that I want to, ask, to, to, to add is it's really important to speak to people. Yeah, surveys are great. Yeah, yeah, asking you to, people to write you know, your experience is great. And yeah, yeah, giving a little star to a service this person is great. I think senior management need to, need to get closer to their customers and actually spend more time where their customers use their products and services. That will give you tremendous insights. Yeah. So be, before we, we switch off, so the advice to my sons was 
never take no from somebody who doesn't have the authority to say yes. Okay. Norman, it was an absolute pleasure to have you here. We had such a great chat. It's a pot pity about the, the technology issues. I don't know if it's if it's um, if it's country infrastructure things because we <laughs> having trouble on on both sides of the of um, wh what is it? It's the Indian Ocean, I think, uh, that's sitting between us. Yeah. Um, so um, Sri Lanka at the moment is experiencing some turmoil. South Africa is sitting with a power shortage, so I'm running on solar at the moment, just praying that we can finish the session. <laughs> Because I refuse to pollute the environment with a with a petrol generator. Anyway, once again, Nermalan, absolute pleasure yeah, to, to have you here. And thank you very much for making time. And guys, yeah, we're going to close off the session now. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you some contact detail. Um, yeah. And it maybe a final a word from you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure, mate. Anytime. Okay, so... If you want to contact uh, Nirmalan, um, share the screen. Uh, I want to share the screen. And I wish want to share that one. There we go. Um, there is his contact detail. So please reach out if, um, if you want to have a conversation with him. And I'm quite sure that if, if, if there's anything that he can do to help your organization, he'll gladly engage with you. Um, so website, um, telephone number, uh, a little bit more detail about the company, uh, by all means, uh, go and check it out. And then the last thing for me to do is just to remind you that the second ADAPT book is available next week. Um, it will not be in print yet, but uh, you can expect it in about two weeks in print, but the ebook will definitely be available. If you need to get a hold of me, there's my contact detail also. Um, thank you so much for listening. Love you all. Stay well. And I really and hope you hope you enjoyed the, the chat today. Cheers. Thank you.